Hi everyone, so this is going to be a video blog post around how to get a dynamic set of URLs or links into an Intex task form in Office 365. Now you'll notice here I have an item with an out of the box SharePoint form, simple title, and then what we have here is a semicolon delimited list of URLs, right? Intex, Bing, and Microsoft. Now let's jump out of there. Now what we have is a workflow that will run that will then assign a task to somebody and in that task we have an in-text form. And what we want to do is we want to take the data that's here and we want to then dynamically uh, generate some hyperlinks in that form. Now let's have a look at what the workflow looks like. So we'll jump over here. Here's my workflow. We're going to focus on this assign task action. So let's pop this one open. And then as soon as this comes up, what we're going to do is click on the ribbon here, the edit task form, and this allows us to edit the task form with Nintex forms. Let's click on that. There we go. Now I'm going to show you a couple of things uh, that you need to do to get this to work. First off, if you already have a Nintex form that's associated with your task and you want to add this functionality to it, just be aware of one thing. When you actually go to uh, to open up this design, you'll find that you'll have your all your fields from your initial item in here under list item, but you probably won't have the that uh, field that I created that has all those URLs in it. So you'll need to add a single line of text control onto your form, and when you highlight it on the right here, give it a name and also uh, connect it to that field that you call. So you can see under list columns, those are all the fields that are from that original item to make sure you link this control or connect this control to that field. The other thing you'll need to do is go down here and under formatting, make sure you give it another class, right? Just add another class. You'll probably already have the nf-form-input. That's the default one. You can always change that, but just add uh, another class name that you will remember. I just called it CSS URL links. You don't need to give it any CSS properties. It's just a way to find this control uh, through JavaScript or jQuery. Okay, so now that that's, that part is done, uh, what you need is this control here. This is just a rich text control, right? You'll see the rich text control right here or left here. <laughs> and then you drag it onto the form. And again, we want to do a couple of things. We want to give it a CSS class, right? CSS hyperlinks. And let me just double check a couple of things. Just want to make sure I didn't do anything else here. Nope, nothing special for this control. And let's just double check this one. Just want to see if I gave it a... Yeah, let's just keep in mind this. What I've done is actually stored the ID of this particular control in a JavaScript variable called var URL links ID. I'm going to double check if I'm actually using that. I may not be. Okay, so anyway, back to the way this is actually this actually works. So when this form runs, this control here will have the same text as we saw in that original item. Right? It'll have all that all those semicolon delimited URLs. So what we then do is we want to add some JavaScript. So we're going to go into the form settings. For this particular form, we're going to jump into the custom JavaScript. And now that I'm actually looking at it, I am not using that JavaScript variable that I created for the, to store the ID, so don't worry about that. We are just using the, uh, the actual CSS classes to find the objects that we need. Cool, makes it a little bit easier. So what I've done is added a function in here, and you can see this uh, register after ready. Basically, what this means is that the code inside this function will run after the form has been rendered. Right, so that means that all the controls have all the data that we expect, which means that single line of text box will have all those URLs in it. Now, this is what we're doing here. Oops, we're finding that object, right? That's the CSS URL links, that's that single line of text box with those URLs. And then inside that, this is me just looking at it through the IE developer tools, uh, that there are another, a few other objects in there the filler control border, the filler control inner, and then we have an input control, which is the actual single line text box. Right. So after all that, what we have is 
that object, the object that contains the data that we need. So there's our object, we're getting that internal value, and then what we're saying is split that up by semicolons. Right, so we're splitting up all those URLs by semicolon. And then what we're doing is we're iterating through each of those URLs and we're just putting together a little bit of HTML. So you can see there's an anchor node with the actual URL and we're dynamically generating a name for that document. Now, of course, you can make this a little bit smarter. So rather than just having maybe semicolon delimited, you could actually have the name that you want to appear on the form, comma, the URL, semicolon, and then same thing, right? So you have name, uh, name, comma, URL, name, comma, URL, name, comma, URL, and you build up your JavaScript to be able to cater for that, right? All I'm doing really here is just saying, generate me all the document links, and each one of them is going to be document dash one, document dash two, document dash three, etc. Now, once I've built up all that HTML, I then find my rich text control, which I called CSS hyperlinks. And then I just update the HTML with my HTML. Right, so I update the HTML for the rich text control with the dynamically generated HTML that I've built out. Now, the very last thing is this thing right here. This is, again, finding that CSS URL links, that, that text box. And we're calling a toggle function, which basically is going to say, hide that particular control, right? Because we want it visible, until we actually build up, you know, grab all the data, and then we can just hide it. We're no longer interested. We don't want to see duplicates of, of the information. We're going to have the dynamic links, right? But we don't need to have a single line of text box actually displaying uh, those on the form. So this is, is the, and it's a, it's, it is a workaround. It's a workaround way of getting this to work, right? Uh, I'll do the same thing for an on-prem environment. On-prem is actually a little bit easier because with the on-prem version of Nintex Forms, when you're building a task form, you actually have access to the collection variable. But you know what? You're still doing the same sort of thing, right? Instead of maybe storing the data in a uh, text box in on-prem, you can actually store it via a calculated value control. Right? So this makes it a little bit easier in that you don't have to have a single line of text box control and, and connect it up to the, you know, the, the other item. But, you know, really, Six of one, half a dozen of the other, pretty much is the same thing. Now I'm going to export this workflow and I'm going to make it available for download on this blog post, but make sure that when you actually do create the list, uh, make sure that you actually create the fields like we have here, this URL links, and make sure when you open up that workflow and you open up the task form, that you do connect up the control to the correct field. Right? Otherwise, it's just not going to work. So hopefully this is helpful. I uh, just want to actually go into this item and actually show you what it looks like. So I'm going to click on that link, and there is my task. So I'm going to click on the task and show you what the task form looks like. And there you see it. You have the title field. We do not have that text box, right? but we do have our URLs. So I can actually... Yeah, well, actually, let's click on that, and that will take us to the uh, to the Nintex page, or you know, whatever it is. Let's say let's right click and go to Bing, or oops, right click here, and it'll take us to the Nintex.com site. So hopefully this is helpful to everybody. If you have any uh, comments, any questions about this, or if you find a better way of doing it, you know, feel free to comment on it and uh, let me know. Thanks for taking the time to watch this.